Welcome, everyone. Just wanted to give you kind of an update on where I'm at. Obviously, that was... Uh, I just did a short, and uh, this video should be linked to it. I had a dead battery. <laughs> Plus, I, think I ordered another one of these because I'm not sure if I've damaged it at all. But it's charging. So, what's going on here? Now... Obviously, I'm still working on... I'm going to put the ailerons and other stuff on. And um, my feet weren't quite touching the ground without these suffering any... Or the ends of these suffering any damage. So, um, tomorrow... <laughs> well, to make it level, I had to put my two cents in. Twice. So, I put my four cents in. Um, other than that... Because I'm short on room, I'm thinking I'm going to take these wires down to about here and then re solder them to here. And that will give me some more room to push these down inside without taking up so much room with wiring and putting any stress on me pushing on these capacitors. Now, what's going to end up happening from that point is I am going to possibly extend the power wires from here to the PDB um, just because I need to be able to move stuff around. Now the battery will go way down in there so I can get plenty of room. It doesn't stop right here. It can go a good three inches into there which gives me the ability to you know shove some foam down in there when I need to adjust CG to get the battery where I need it to be and then kind of lock everything into place the transitioning system works well um it's just a lot of wires i gotta try and manage and i think if i do this in a bigger version which i think i'm gonna go with a 90 millimeter version um uh, i'm going to go with possibly 12s 90 millimeter or 120 millimeter and it'll be as simple as basically upscaling the entire thing so the entire thing will be the same design but it'll be bigger i'll have to slice it on more than more more plates than i did with this one printer is going right now i think what's going to end up happening is um once this scales up obviously you get less uh less demand on on amps just more on volts the future plan is going to... I really want to do 120 millimeter. And then just scale the entire s system up. Scale everything up. From this section here. So what I'll end up doing is just mo measuring the outer diameter of the 120 millimeters. Figuring out what my interior wall is in fusion here. And then upscaling it to fit that 120 which will bring the entire system to a, a, a much larger configuration, but in the same type of configuration. So after we test with this one, and I know it'll fly with a charged battery, and, <laughs> and then we'll go from there. So I just kind of wanted to give you an update. I do have one motor that wants to, wants to, wants to stop on these sometimes at random. And that could be anything from this mess of uh, wire controls or uh, signal wires that go to the controller. Um, or it could be in the ESC itself. It could be the capacitor because it did break a leg. So I had to solder, short it and solder it back onto the, onto the uh, positive side. So yeah, we're going to, we're going to slice these down get them soldered up shorter possibly lengthen these wires here so that i have more room to move the pdb around and get the battery in so that the top part of the craft can slide down on over the carbon fiber tubes and i have some magnets here that hold it in place that's the plan so far and i think what we're going to end up doing after this is uh we're going to get a successful hover test in first got to do that first and then we will take it out after I've hooked up the ailerons and tested everything. Well, the servos and everything actually are working and going in the right directions. So that I'm not too worried about.
what I'm worried about is the hover. I got to get the hover down. I've already gone through and adjusted the PID loop um, to compensate for what it was doing when I did a short test, when I just had this section. So, yeah. That's where we're at. Um, this should have a maiden pretty soon. I'm just going to go ahead and clean all this up and then kind of make it fit in there and work like it's supposed to. <laughs> and then... After I scale this up to 120, I've got to change the ESCs. I've got to change the, this power distribution board would work because it's rated at 500 amps. Unfortunately, you can't buy any straight anymore from the company because um, they stopped selling to the hobbyist market. So I don't even know if places like Get FPV can get them anymore. If you have any suggestions for power distribution boards, that are around this size or bigger, because I can always adjust the design. That is around 500 amps. That's what I'm looking for. But the great part about it is I do have one that was done by uh, Taro. That's 480 amps. It's a much bigger board, but it is designed for 12S already. And I may incorporate that into this design once it's scaled up to fit the 120 millimeter motors. But until then, we still need to get a successful maiden on this one. So hover test next after a charged battery. And I'll try to keep uh, tabs on the battery. I'm going to order another one just so I have another one on hand. Just so I, you know, just in case I did any damage to any of the cells with the high current amp draw. Because to be honest with you, I can't find a 6,000 milliamp like this. That's 150 C. I would... That would be optimal for me. 120 I could get away with. Uh, 150 would be nice. So that's what we're going to do. And then as soon as we're ready and it has a successful hover test indoors, uh, we're going to take it out and we're going to launch it. And then we're going to do the transition into plane mode. We're going to see how the airfoils do. We're going to see how the ailerons do. The double rudder design. And then what we're going to do is come back in when we come to land and I'm going to come in at kind of like a high alpha you know back the throttle off get it to a high alpha so that when I so I can pitch up and transition back into drone mode without having any major jerking motions happening so um the idea is to come in come in nose up slow it down just like you know you've seen the f-22s do and then transition back into drone mode and then the motor should take over and I can land it. So uh, it's been the plan all along. The Shrike was basically designed to understand this whole ESE power distribution and EDFs and how they function and what the proper pid loop is for those things for these edfs because it's so much different than standard motors as far as the pid loop so uh okay so the next time you see this hopefully the this next full length video that i do will be of this maiden but you will more than likely see a short of a hover test first uh, I attempted one, like I said earlier, with a dead battery. <laughs> so we will keep working. Uh, I still have to mount those aileron servos with the wiring's all there. Everything's working like it's supposed to. Um, so stick around. It's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. No matter what happens to this thing, it's going to be fun to watch. So uh, if you're new here, please subscribe, like, comment, share. Help me grow the channel. Because then that helps me build more stuff. More stuff for you guys. And then once this is perfected, uh, if you are all interested, I will be sending out the STL files as either a standard STL file or I will send it out as a 3MF for Bamboo Studio, things like that. But what we're going to do is we're going to get these this perfect first. Then we're going to get the STLs out. The equipment used... The specs, the motors, the amps, the volts, basically everything that you would need to do this if you wanted to do it yourself. Or if you wanted to remix it and you wanted to 
try something new. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Thank you.